Oh yeah, butter. Now it's just sliding right off. I thought this was a Cali car, PT. What's going on? I thought so too, DP. I thought it would never happen to us. That is leaking. It's like a rubber valve. And of course we went online and it is a common thing to leak. As you can see, we are trying something different here. In the last episode, we got this thing fired up and man, is it great to have a running engine. There was one small little issue. We did have a coolant leak. And now today we are facing another small little issue and that is the cooling fan. I upgraded to this SPAL unit, which is like pushes 1700 CFM. It is very, very big. And guess what that means? It draws a lot of amps. Now, I was uh, testing to see why it wasn't coming on and I noticed that it does pop a fuse. And with the link system here, I'll be able to turn the fan on. And now to test the fan, what I would do is go here on. And then once I hit okay though, you're gonna see this fuse is going to pop pretty quickly. And that is just because the amperage, as you see right now, Woo. there it goes. <laughs> the amperage is just too high. So we went online and we looked and that fan, you know, technically people put a 20 amp fuse in here and they can get away with it, but it's super risky. That thing's supposed to have 30 amps. If you put a 20 amp fuse in there, the, the wires could burn up and cause a fire. So it's just not worth it. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically build a relay for a fan that's gonna have the proper size uh, gauge wire. So this fan will work properly and it's not gonna melt and burn this whole car down. 30 minutes later and I do have a relay set up. We didn't bother shooting it because we figured, you know what, there's so many videos out there on how to set up a relay for a fan system. It is pretty simple. Relay is wired up and let us see now if our fan works. Ooh. Oh yes. Now we don't have to worry about stuff melting down and DP. That's a lot of fan. Move some air. That is moving some air. That is good because I think we're gonna need it. So at, at this point, man, I think that is like all the small little headaches we have with you know the engine. The next thing we are gonna start with is actually doing a valve adjustment. So we gotta take the valve cover off and check the valve lash because it was so clackety on startup. So we, we wanna make sure that that's in spec. As you can see, I've got the exhaust cam pointed up here and the spec is between 006 millimeters to 008. And this one here seems to be right in the middle at 007, which is a good sign over here. Six is too loose, seven too loose, and eight is oh just right. So here, let's go to nine. At this point, the best way to check it is to go to... Yeah, one that won't fit in again. Yeah, and then let's see if nine goes in there. You can see, too tight, does not want to go in. Just now I've jammed it in there almost. Go figure, the last intake valve is the one that's uh, that's quite off. So these are 0 .003 to 0 .005 millimeter. This one actually has, as you can see, 0 .008, and that even fits in there kind of loose. So uh, I'm gonna tighten it up, and the way to do that is, you can see, you put a uh, 12 mil wrench on here, and then you adjust this up like that and then you tighten it up and you're ready to go. If five doesn't fit, then we will tighten that up. I don't know the five fits, so we'll do this again. And really it's, it's not a hard process as you see, just tighten it a little bit more, bring it down, close that off. And I bet now we're either too tight or just right. There. How come you're using a wrench and a screwdriver instead of our fancy snap-on tool? We don't have a tool, DP. Yeah, I just pulled it out of the drawer. You did? Yeah. <laughs> you we'll see. Grab it. And here is the said tool. You can see this one uh, works a lot easier. Oh, and it doesn't actually fit on here, DP. What? See, this isn't for this car then. What? What's going on? I thought that was my snap-on one. Is that some... No, this one says snap-on on, or oh. blue point, Blue but point, I mean, yeah. it's the exact same thing. It doesn't, Honda it doesn't features. fit. It worked on my Type R motors. Uh-oh. What? Is there something different about the non-Type R motor? I, I, 
That's don't know. Crazy. I don't know. Maybe All the right. phone will tell us. All right. <laughs> now I am pretty confident we are there. Using conventional tools. We want to show you how to use the conventional tools sure. anyways, DP. The broke boy styles here. Well, that's it's it. not even that. There, that's, that feels like it's got the perfect amount of drag. I don't know if that's gonna, you know, quiet this thing down or not, because a lot of them were within spec. You know, that one was off. A few of the exhaust ones were just like a little bit of loose, but nevertheless, that just reassures me that that is good within spec. <laughs> with the wheel and tire package there for a second, but uh, not yet, not yet everyone. You're gonna have to wait for that, but it's gonna be good, I promise. And uh, as you just saw, we did have to do a little bit of maintenance here. We have, of course, changed out the wheel bearing because the one on the other side was bad and we figured preventatively, let's change this one out too, even though it didn't feel too bad. And as you can see, we've gone with the uh, so-called poor man's Type R big brake conversion on this car, which is a 280 mil Mini Cooper S rotor which happens to have the right offset and bolt pattern to fit on a four lug honda the rotor by the way is from our friends at pro series this is their oe plus series of rotor as well as the brake pads and the brake pads pete and i were really intrigued by the the friction material that they're using here you can see it has some like metallic material in it i think they might actually be carbon ceramic dp it looks like that uh huracan lamborghini chunk <laughs> carbon fiber forged carbon that's, that's right. right it's got that forged carbon vibe and i, I really like the uh the rubberized backing plate they use on here, it's actually four layers to ensure quietness. So really high quality stuff. These are Type R calipers that actually came with the car, including these uh, StopTech stainless steel brake lines. And of course, we have gone with a new set of coilovers from our friends at Annex Suspension. We've been using their coilovers on all our projects lately because we just love the combination of ride quality, performance on the track, overall build quality, customization, and the fast road poros like we've got in this case are designed for road use as well as like light track duty. You can step up to their club spec pros like we often do if it's more of a track car, but we love the fast road pros for the street and uh, you can get a set with a discount code in the description below for 125 bu bucks off. It's just code Speed Academy. So uh, say hi to the guys at Annex for us. Oh, back you can see we have the classic drum brakes that come on like CX lower model, uh, e.g. hatchbacks. And frankly, they're ugly. That's the main reason we want to change them out. They work okay, but they're also really a pain in the butt to service. I don't know about you, but if you've ever like rebuilt the uh, drums, the shoes and all that in here, not, not a good time. The bushings are also blown out on the control arms. So we're just going to change it out for a disc which looks better, it's easier to service, lots of pad options with drums. You don't really have a lot of pad options or friction material options, so it's just good to get it out of there. Here comes these admittedly rust-free trailing arms, which uh, if you're looking for a rust-free drum rear brake setup, shoot us a message and uh, we will show you 
that you will have to replace this bushing because... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is completely, completely done. So that was not doing a whole heck of a lot. And uh, we weren't planning to replace these adjustable toe arms because they're adjustable, but you can see the bushing on this is completely baffed as well. And what we have going in its place are these Integra rear lower control arms, which we got from our friend Luke at Clean Street in Cambridge, Ontario. I then drove about two blocks away and dropped them off at JP at Stripping Tech, also in Cambridge, Ontario, who has powder coated them for us. And uh, in its place, we're gonna put in these hard race hardened rubber bushings. These are the sweet spot in terms of like adding uh, performance without adding too much NVH. All right, as you can see, we're using uh, new hubs and bearings on here, and the race on this side was nice and clean, but very commonly, there was uh, part of the inner bearing left on the race on the other side. So let's cut to that and show you what that's all about. Here is an all too common occurrence. You go and pull the hub and the bearing out here, as you can see, this whole assembly. And what's happened is the race on the backside of the bearing has separated and is now left on this lower control arm. And this can be a problem to remove so what we've read, the best way to do, or to remove this is to actually just heat this up and it should be able to just like slide down and then you can get like a, um, a screwdriver underneath it. So we're gonna do exactly that and see if we can remove that. What I wanna do here is concentrate all the heat onto the race. It is now starting to turn a little bit of that bluish color. So I think there's a bunch of heat in it. There's absolutely no way that I'm gonna get in here underneath it. There's no chance. So I'm gonna see if I can actually try to rotate this a little bit. If I can rotate it, then let's see. Yeah, there's no way. This, I think this is gonna require a, a chisel. Chief is out here, everybody. The real worry with this is if I slip, so if I try to hammer this here, and if I slip and hit this, that's a bad thing, or even worse, you chew up some of the threads here. So that's that's really my biggest concern with this. But let's, let's see what happens here. Sometimes it'll just shock it and start moving it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got like a two mil gap starting to show here. So it is moving it slowly. Another beautiful Amazon special here. You can see bearing uh, puller kit. So these are actually like they slide down underneath such as this. Perfect for an application, what we have here. And then all we're gonna do is tighten these up slowly. Oh yeah. There's butter. Now it's just sliding right off there. Like yeah. a proper tool. So there you have it. That is how you would, in this instance, remove this thing. As you can see, we've done a quick brake refresh, if you wanna call that. Obviously with the disc conversion, it's all new, but these are Pro Series rotors and we put in Pro Series OE Plus pads and we refreshed the calipers that came on these control arms. They were actually really low mileage, but we gave them a coat of paint to make them look good. You can see we also put our Annex coilovers in place and uh, it is now time to discuss a little curveball that we threw ourselves on the back end of the car here. This car came with Type R lower control arms, which are great. They're actually stiffer than the uh, non-Type R ones and they have stiffer bushings in them. But you can see it uses this like pocket style mounting system and we failed to tell Annex that this is the rear lower control arm we had. So they send us a rear uh, mounting bracket for a standard EG or DC to non-Type R lower control arm. So we're like, all right, how do we solve this problem? We happen to have a stash of hard race parts over there from stage four motorsports. So we jumped into that stash and pulled out this OE style arm with hard race hardened rubber bushings in it. And we bolted it into place, but we noticed there was like a huge gap on either side of the bushing here. So we're like, oh, did Annis 
put the wrong bracket on here, started doing some homework, and we realized, no, this was not an annex problem. This is actually a hard race uh, option to go to a 40 mil sized bushing at the shock location for EK sized shock uh, lower mounts. Very strange that would you, you, you would use like an EK lower mount on an EG or DC2, but I guess there's people that want to do that for whatever reason. And we happen to have ordered these by mistake. Once we figured that out, we called our buddy Chris at Stage 4 Motorsports, who doesn't live far from here, and said, hey, do you have normal, you know, 50 mil bushing lower control arms in stock? And what he had in stock were these nice billet ones. And as you can see, it's got the 50, 50 mil wide bushing for the shock. So these will just fit right in there perfectly. And we are good to go. And we get this extra blingy blue as a bonus. With those uh, control arms in place, the rear end is complete. And as you can see, it did come with this Progress tie bar slash reinforcement kit. And that's because uh, the, the subframes on the rear of these cars are prone to tearing out when you put a bigger rear sway bar on them. In fact, the CX wouldn't have come with a rear sway bar at all. So this kit is designed to not only give you a, some way of mounting up the sway bar, but also reinforcing the subframe so that it doesn't tear out from the stresses of the bigger bar. Now, since we did a full brake upgrade, we are now left with what is essentially the stock master cylinder for the CX. You can see it is a 13 16th size, and we are going to be making an upgrade to this one. Again, thank you to Aaron for including this in his stash of parts that came with the car. And this is a 15, 16. So this is certainly a larger uh, brake master cylinder. And the thing is you could stick with this. However, this is more of like a preference thing. We're trying to go for more of an OEM setup here where the pedal feels more like a, uh, you know, an Integra setup with those Type R front brakes and the, and the discs in the rear. With this, what we would have is more travel with the pedal, but it would feel spongier. It wouldn't be as firm. So this uh, setup, what we're gonna have is a firmer pedal, but not as much travel. So, you know, take it as you will. Some people do prefer that versus this. For those of you that have ever changed a brake master, you will know that really the best technique to get all of the air out of the system is to bench bleed it. So you can see I am going to fill this with our Valvoline brake fluid here. And now I need to get a screwdriver that I don't have. So if you had installed this in the car, you'd have to sit there and pump your brake a, a bunch of times and you really wouldn't know whether all of the air is out of the system. But in doing so here, you can see, look, all of the air travels through and now you just go back and forth and pump this through until all of the air is gone. Here's a bit of a pro tip too. Just give it the old lean and that helps push any of the air that would be potentially trapped right at the front out. And you can see we are now at a point here where I feel like we do not have any air in the system. What I've done actually is I've pushed the brake pedal all the way in, which usually uh, will close off the master cylinder. You can see we're not getting, look, and we're not getting a ton of fluid running out of here. Look how, look how slow that's moving. That is ideal. So that to me goes to, to prove that pushing the brake in is a good idea. Next thing to swap over is a proportioning valve. Uh, the factory Civic one, because of the drum brakes, it has like really low pressure going to the rear drums. And what we want is higher pressure for those discs. So we want to convert it over with this proportion valve. Um, what you're looking for is this 4040 stamp. This will be out of like an Integra or you know anything that was like with Civic the, SI. Yeah, yeah, anything that had the, the discs on it. And sadly, this is now six fittings that I have to undo. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but uh, hang in with us here and we are gonna get this done. But this was a Cali car PT, what's going I, on? I thought so too, DP. I thought it would never happen to us, but here we are. We gotta get the torch out. The fitting down there is not loving life at all, so I need to put a bunch of heat into it and hope, hope that I don't strip it. That would be disastrous. Come on, fitting. Yes, it's moving. It's moving, everybody. We have movement, see? We got some movement. All right. This fitting is not great, though. It's, it's a little uh, stripped. Yeah, it's like a couple turns away from from the full strippage. Oh, this one, see, it's so tight. There's no way to 
Man, this is not ideal. It's so hard to like get your wrench in here. Two hours later. I think this is going to be officially the worst job that I've had to do on this entire car. Man, getting these lines out of here was no fun. 20 minutes later. I'm about to lose it here. This is incredible. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I just loosened this thing, like all three studs that are holding this uh, on, the, the nuts are off and I can't get the damn thing off. It's like the studs are too tight. Like the holes are, are, are too small or something. Like what? Look at this. I'm, I literally have to pry this to try to get it off. I'm about to get the uh, the chop saw out here and just go bah, cut this thing in half, man. Because like, what is going on? You want Look me at to, this. Do you want me to do this, PT? Because there's a certified stud. I, I can oh, man. test to the fact look that. At, uh, no, oh, look, look. Oh, ooh. Here we go. Here oh, we now go. you're getting there. Oh, oh there you go. What See, in a little, a little rage, a little aggression? You're good to go. What in the world, DP? I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I still can't get it off. Still, like, still fighting me. Still fighting me. There you oh, go. Oh my goodness, guys. Uh, Fun job. I, I don't know if this is worth it. This better, DP. This better be worth it. You this want it for your real better be worth sure. it. Tomorrow. It's a new day, which means I've had time to relax, and here it is, everybody. This is like, uh, man, an hour and a half, maybe two hours in. I I, I lost track yesterday because it was I think late an hour in the and a half, about right. Yeah, to to try to get this back in, but this pitiful job is done. Certainly, post in the comments, guys. Did we waste our time? Because I certainly hope not. Uh. Things just get so much better. Uh, guess what? We started bleeding the brakes. And, come on, you can make a good guess here as to what is leaking. No, none of the fittings here are leaking. We, we tighten those up properly. There is a check valve down here that is leaking. It's like a rubber valve, and of course we went online and it is a common thing to leak. So guess what? This is gonna have to come out. We are either gonna have to find another one. But Dave just did some research and uh, DP, why don't you tell everybody what you, what you found? I mean, I, I, the forums say the 3030 valve, so the drum brake valve, seems to work fine for this brake conversion. <laughs> so, uh, moral of the story here is, do your research and don't be like us and start swapping stuff because, you know, it's the right way to go when really what we should have done is just tested it and then if we didn't like the brake pedal feel, then maybe swapped it out, but now we either go back to the 3030 or we go find another 4040. So we're just gonna leave this. We don't need brakes right now and we will come back to this and kind of like fix it. But uh, I'm just over it. I don't want to deal with it. As you can see, we are trying something different here. We have two sets of Koenig wheels. These are the Koenig Ultragrams and these are the Koenig Heliograms, both in this titanium metallic color. And we are gonna let you guys decide which wheel we put on this car. Personally, I am a fan of these, DP. Yeah. I certainly love the nice. split spoke, yeah. like five spoke style. Little bit of concave. 
And these, I'm these. I'm a fan of the Ultragrams. Uh, and I'm gonna go that, that I, I know way. you were gonna say that. Both wheels are winners in my book, but um, you guys let us know in the comments which one you guys like, and that is the, the one we will end up running on this car. Four specs, these are both 15 by eight plus 36 offset, and they are what I think is perfect fitment on this car, like you guys saw, this thing looks perfect with these. And for tires, we have gone with our Extreme Contact Sport O2s from Continental. And we, we've talked about these tires a lot. We love them. They are an amazing 340 Treadwear summer performance tire. But we, we haven't talked about a lot is the Total Confidence Plan. So anytime you buy a Continental tire, it does come with their Total Confidence Plan. For example, this Extreme Contact Sport O2 has 30,000 miles for its treadwear warranty. So at a minimum, it's gonna last 30,000 uh, miles. If it doesn't, then they will replace it. It also has an amazing road hazard coverage warranty for the first 12 months. For example, you get any type of puncture, they will replace it for free as a goodwill gesture. They also have like emergency roadside assistance. What you do have to do though, is if you do buy a set of these tires, you do have to go sign up for that plan. But once you're signed up, the coverage and the the options are amazing. The other thing is you don't have to take our word for it. They do come with a 60 day money back guarantee if you don't like the tires. So don't believe us, go try these things and I am pretty confident you are going to be so happy with them. Before we wrap this episode, I'm going to attempt to fix our leaking prop valve. You can see I have taken apart our 3030, so the existing one that we know for a fact wasn't leaking here at this, uh, let's just call it a check valve, but I, I don't even Low know exactly valve. what it is. It's- uh, When you put too much boost in your brake system. It, it's, it, it literally has like a little rubber diaphragm there. Um, now, I don't know if this is the exact same as that, but odds are I'm pretty sure it is. I think Honda never intended for anybody to take this apart. Look, they're using like these security bolts here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thankfully we've got the, the right, bit for it, let's see one, and you go to the other side, there is a spring in here, so it is under tension. So now that that is apart, let's see what we've got in here. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right, so. It's like a blow off valve. It does look like a blow off valve. Look, this is red, which is so weird. This one here, look, different color. Hmm. <gasps> and almost what looks to be, let's see, is that a smaller diameter? Nah, it's so hard to tell, but at this point, we are sending it, DP. One eternity later. Valve is back in and I'm pumping the brakes. DP, have a look. Do we have right. any, any fluid leaking? I'm holding, holding. Is there any leak anywhere? Looks dry to me, man. That valve is working good. I think so. Oh, thank goodness. It might and actually be a win. Well, and now who knows if the, you know, ratio is off or whatever, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. And if you guys have stuck around to the end, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fire this thing up and let's see if we can move it on its own accord here. Man, it has been a while since I've used crank windows, guys. Right? <laughs> so, it may, definitely has that uh, nostalgia feel. Before you fire it up, BT, this thing looks good. Yes, it I know does it does. It look good. Man, the, the clutch pedal feels nice and soft, very light. All right, let's see what happens here. Guys, this thing is like the epitome of OEM Plus in terms of how quiet it is. Like, it is crazy how quiet it is. All right, let's put this thing into gear here. My parking brake is on. <laughs> Oh, oh, look at that. Back in the reverse. Oh, yes. Yes, we've got ourselves a running EG, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, the brakes don't work. Shot burnout now? Oh, what? yeah, yeah. We'll go straight into the wall. So, all right, guys. That is going to be a wrap here. Man, I am so pumped. This thing is like this close from being finished. You, you can see we've got some work to do in the interior. But most important of all, we've got some more exterior mods that are on the way, which are really gonna make this thing look trick. So stay tuned to the next one.